Hi, I'm Anjali Rao in Taipei, home to my guest this week, singer-songwriter Jay Chow. He started out life as the quiet kid. These days, as one of Asia's hottest stars, he can't walk down a street without being mobbed by adoring fans. This is Talk Asia. Icon, movie star, singer, songwriter, and film director. Jay Chow has revolutionized and ruled contemporary Asian pop, writing his own material and playing his own music. In an industry full of pre packaged pop stars, Jay's unconventional looks, shy nature, and unglamorous background make him an unlikely hero. He was first noticed for his score writing skills at a talent show. And soon after, he was making music for more famous Chinese artists. Jay took to the mic and released his first album in 2000. Ever since, he's been releasing an album a year and also starring in films such as Johnny Mo's Curse of the Golden Flower and most recently, Kung Fu Duck. It's his mix and match approach that continues to attract millions in the Chinese speaking community and beyond. We meet Jay at one of his restaurants in Taipei. Jay, it's a pleasure to meet you. Welcome to Talk Asia. So, you know, with most pop stars, the image is everything. You say that you're not really bothered about that. For you, it's all about the music. What is it about music that defines you so heavily as a person? Music is like my life. It's constantly growing and evolving, and it influences me very much. Actually, it's like drinking water. I have to do it every day. But the thing is, how can you do it better and better? You're often slated for mumbling your way through the lyrics. Don't you want people to be able to hear what you're singing about? I didn't do it intentionally. I didn't realize it's my style at all until people told me about it. Later, I tried to make it as my trademark, as in this way I could use my vocal as an instrument. If you can't hear what I'm singing, you can read the lyrics book. This is even better, because lyrics are meant to be read as a piece of art. Otherwise, why should we print the lyrics book? It gives you a chance to appreciate the beauty of lyrics. <laughs> I suppose that's one way of looking at it. You're often referred to as a sort of an anti-hero in this industry, somebody who got fame despite himself because you're so shy and retiring. How do you make sure that you don't get bullied or steamrolled by this business? I think showbiz in Taiwan, or even in the Chinese-speaking region, is quite different from showbiz in the US. The more low-profile and tight-lipped you are, the more the paparazzi runs after you. And I happen to belong in this category. So I think there's a huge difference in cultures. Being loud doesn't guarantee you a respectful status in this circle. In this sense, it's quite different from the culture in the US. Now, back in 2003, you played to a crowd of more than 10,000 people at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. That sounds like a really daunting thing. You know, particularly for a guy who says he's not that confident, how did you get through it? I think my confidence belongs to the stage or when I'm standing in front of the screen. I'm like two different people on stage and off stage. On the stage, I have to be very confident, particularly when they're all filming you with cameras and you know that you're being watched on screen. The Jay Chow on TV is really not the same as the one off stage. 
Most pop stars pick typical boy-girl subject matter to sing about. You seem to have gone in a different direction. You've sung about an abusive father and jilted lover and all sorts. Where is this dark material coming from? I think my music is quite different from the Western rap music culture. They really don't mind bringing in foul language and topics on violence. But you won't find those in my music. The only reason why I sang about an abusive father was that I wanted to remind people of the social problems we have. The UK think tank Chatham House rates you among China's most influential people. Does knowing something like that make you feel like you've got a greater sense of responsibility to live up to? I do have this sense of responsibility to be inspirational for society, particularly children, really. That's why the most important theme in my songs is love, including the love for our parents. The rap music in America is all about drugs, guns and violence, but mine is quite the opposite. My songs sound like they're about violence, but the lyrics are all about love, like don't take drugs or take care of your parents. So, especially for Westerners, I really think they'll be amazed at how paradoxical my music is. The rhythm and everything has so much strength in it, and yet the themes are so sentimental and soft. I think this is my way of doing music. Being one of Asia's most famous faces, you're a real target for the paparazzi, and you seem to have a special loathing for them, which you've sung about. What is it in particular that angers you so much about them? I don't think anyone likes the paparazzi, especially when you're an artist. I think sometimes they are, I don't know how to put it. I actually wrote a song particularly for them. The lyrics clearly express what I want to tell them. I've sung them all out already. <laughs> Hopefully there won't be uh, anything about me in there. Um, what are the worst run-ins that you've had with the paparazzi? There were one or two instances. There was this one time when I really thought they'd crossed the line. I was driving at the time and they were riding on motorbikes. Actually, I could spot them from a distance. So during the red light, I got so furious that I just got off my car and tried to grab their keys on the motorbike, you know, to throw the key away. But then they reacted so quickly that they grabbed the keys before I could grab them, and they filmed the whole process, so that was the first run-in experience. And for the second time, there were paparazzi waiting outside my company, so I went to a 7-Eleven store and bought a can of dog food. I put the can on top of their car and I just left, so these two run-ins were quite exciting. Do you think that fame has changed you at all? Has it changed me? Hmm. Relatively speaking, I'd say it's a loss of freedom. This I'm pretty sure of. But when I put this aside, I'd have to say that there are lots of good things too. First, people all across the Mandarin-speaking world can now listen to my music. I can perform on stage and sing my own songs. It's just the freedom part that I have to adjust to. I'm pretty happy with everything else. I would like now to apologize. You appeared alongside another star of the time, Edison Chen. What are your thoughts on the scandal that eventually brought him down? for insurance solutions to help keep you balanced.
为什么天亮的时候，云朵总是那么的暗？Currently filming the sequel to your 2008 hit, Kung Fu Dunk, and you've made five other movies since you started out on the screen in 2003. Did you think that a shy boy who liked to play the piano would ever see himself on the big screen? In the beginning, I felt quite uncomfortable seeing myself in the movies. I felt like it's not really me. But back then, I was still excited about the filming experience, so I continued to work on different projects. My hope is to present myself to my fans, so my fans are really. So, the music gave me a big boost. What's been your favorite scene in a movie that you've done? Something that you're really proud of? I'd say it's the project on which I collaborated with director Zhang Yimou. I felt very honored to have worked with him, and it's something that I had never imagined before. You know, I had the privilege to work with Chao Yun Fat and Gong Li. This is something I never dreamed of doing in my life. It's very fortunate to have them as co-actors in your second movie, even if you're a professional actor. Not to mention the fact that I was actually a musician turned actor. What an experience was that for you? For instance, working alongside huge cinematic names like Gong Li and Chow Yun Fat. What I observed from them is that big stars are actually very humble. They're really friendly to everyone, and you don't see them wearing that haughty look that celebrities usually do behind the scenes. For instance, Chow Yun Fat was always joking with people. Every time you walked into the set, you could hear him laughing. So he really knew how to make the others feel relaxed about his presence. As for director Zhang Yimou, I never saw him losing his temper at work. So I really learned a lot from them. Now, in 2007's Secret, you played the lead. You also wrote the screenplay and directed it. Anywhere that you film, anywhere in the world, those are three primary roles. You decided to take all of them on. Why? Well, I think I tend to believe in myself. I don't know. Maybe I was born to believe in myself rather than in others. That's why I like to complete my work on my own. Once I understand how something works, I'll want to do it myself, like the scores in my movie. And you know, the whole story was based on concepts I had in my mind. So of course I knew the screenplay very well, and naturally, it would be truer to my style if I could also direct the film. Another reason is that I'm getting older now. I want to play a student, convincingly, when I still have the chance, because it'll be too late to do so after a few more years. So I just like to do everything on my own. You obviously like to be in the driver's seat on your projects. Is it fair to call you a control freak? I do think I was born to be sort of a control freak, because I always command people to do this and that, and because I don't have brothers and sisters, so I just want to be sort of an elder brother. Like in this industry, I tried to nurture many newcomers, because I want to feel like we're family. You've got such a strong public presence. You're Absolutely everywhere, and as such, you're sort of fair game for the critics. For example, when you were in the movie Initial D, you spoke of having a really good time and you know, being quite happy with the job that you'd done. But the critics weren't very nice about your performance. Oh, so many people. You can't do it. Fang Sheng, I'm going to get the name. Hmm. I'm going to get the name. I'm going to get the name. 
嗯，你知啦。嗯。How do you take what they have to say? 呃，我我我所听到的负面评价应该就是。What I heard from the critics was that I didn't have much facial expression. That was my very first acting experience. But later, when I thought about it, I understood that yes, I wasn't very good at acting. But after all, I was playing myself, and I don't have much facial expression as well. The boy in the manga is also like this. You know, a quiet guy driving his car, indulging in his own thoughts. I think not having much facial expression can also be part of my acting, because I can portray the role very naturally. You know, looking natural is very important. In that movie, you appeared alongside another star of the time, Edison Chen. What was it like to work with him? I always thought he had character. When we were working on the film, I thought the role in the manga was tailor-made for him. He got along quite well with the crew too. We used to keep in touch after the filming, but not so often these days. So it sounds like you were friends then. What are your thoughts on the scandal that eventually brought him down? I would like now to apologize to all the people for all the suffering that has caused, that has been caused, and the problems that have arisen from this. I admit that most of the photos being circulated on the internet were taken by me. Actually, I was quite shocked by the news, and I didn't know what to say at all. We used to keep in touch right after the filming, but I lost contact with him since our last update. I'm not sure how he's doing right now. Jake, you're a wealthy single guy, yet you still live at home with your mum. How come? Living Golf Minute, in time with Rolex. It's more than 80 years since Samuel Ryder first conceived of the idea of a biennial golf contest between Britain and the United States, and over the decades it has expanded into one of the most thrilling and dynamic contests in all of world sport. Let these Ryder Cup matches begin. Don't forget our website, pick up golfing tips from our resident experts on fashion and perfecting your swing. Also, go behind the scenes with the Living Golf team. Jay, you were brought up in a single parent family and you're an only child. Was it as lonely as it sounds? Of course I felt lonely when I was a child. It's always like that for kids in single parent families. But it's also because of that that I had plenty of free time to do what I liked. It allowed me to practice really hard on my music. So actually being an only child and being brought up by just one parent worked for you? Perhaps it's not so good for my mother, but it's good for me. You started playing the piano at a very early age, about three years old. You did have to adhere to a very strict practice schedule, didn't you? And I also read that there were plenty of times where you wanted to just give it up. Why didn't you? Uh, During that time, I was actually under immense pressure. When I saw other kids playing, 
I felt it was so unfair to me. But then every time I thought about how much money my mother had spent on the piano, I really didn't want to disappoint her. That's why there were a number of times I was really about to give up. But then I just sucked it up and told myself that one day all my hard work would pay off. did you have to practice? When I was a kid, I practiced two to three hours a day. Every day? Yes, when I was small, every day. But then it's only when I was small. I stopped practicing after I started releasing my albums. School and academia were just not your things at all. What was that time in your life like? I'd say... I wasn't an attention-seeking person back in high school, so I got along pretty well with my classmates. Actually, I miss my old school days so much that I decided to make a movie about it. I think campus life is just beautiful. Your break eventually came at a talent show. Not that you impressed the judges. What happened on that day? I think there are a lot of talent shows on Taiwan TV. It's not very difficult to stand out. But then eight years ago, no, maybe ten years ago, I wasn't the one applying for the show as a contestant. My classmates applied for me. Because, you know, everybody knew I was really into songwriting. So I was like, oh, okay, let's give it a try. But I didn't do it for the sake of getting famous. I never felt comfortable with all this attention ever since I started out in this industry. Because I said I never want to aim to be a pop icon or whatever. My first album was actually a collection of songs that I wrote for other people. And they didn't want those songs, so I sort of recollected them, remixed them and recorded them on my own. The only aim I had was to be a singer-songwriter, not an idol, because I'm not very good-looking. So I think it's luck that brought me out of obscurity. It's the timing, the place, and the people that allowed me to take a step forward. Jay, you're a wealthy single guy, yet you still live at home with your mum. How come? Doesn't the bachelor life appeal to you, having your own space? I don't think I'll move out. My parents divorced when I was a kid, and I made up my mind that even if I get married someday, I'll still live with my mum so that I can take care of her, keep her company. I've been having this thought for many years. No matter what happens in the future, I'll live with my mom. <laughs> You're kidding. Yeah, perhaps there's some cultural differences between Chinese and Western people. The Western kids grow up to break away from their families, to become totally independent and make their own lives. But I think Chinese people are very different. We value our roots a lot. No matter how much money you make outside, you still have to go home because we have this duty, this responsibility to take care of our parents. This is the difference I see, at least from what I know. If you had to name the moment in your career which is your proudest, whether it's music or movies, anything to do with that, what would it be? The proudest moment? Well, I've had that in a lot of stages. Like after my first concert, I felt so proud of myself. But then when someone made a wax model of me, I felt proud too. There were so many moments. The point is that in every stage of your career, you have a different definition of pride. In Japan, I had the privilege to hold a concert at Nippon Budokan. It's a very prestigious venue. Even the Japanese artists crave to have the chance to perform at Nippon Budokan. So that made me proud of myself as well. And then I made my own directorial debut on screen. I felt proud too, so it really depends on which stage you're in. 
You've done practically everything that there is to do, it sounds like, in the entertainment industry, yet you're still only 29. What else is there for you? Something that you really want to do that you haven't yet? I'm starting to think that maybe it's not so good for me to know too many things, because the more I know, the more the workload, and it'll only drive me crazy. The only thing I want now is some body doubles. I know there are lots of people in mainland China who really look like me. So sometimes I'll half-jokingly say, hey, you look almost like me. Could you do that for me? You'll take care of that commercial. I'll take care of the concert. So basically, I've been wishing to have some body doubles to share my workload and have more time for myself. Jay, thank you very much indeed you. for your time today. It was great. Thank you.